One more time for Daughters of Creative Sound. We're so happy to have them here because they bring the heartbeat. You know what they say about the drum, right? What they say? That it's your heart. The beating of the drum is the beating of your heart. So when you are somewhere and like they say, all of a sudden you want to jump up, there's nothing wrong with you, that's your heart. It's all right. Now, I done jumped up here. Oh, here he comes. I done jumped up here because I want to tell you some things about what's going on around here in Niagara Falls. Now, like the daughter said, we are steps away from freedom. And unfortunately, today, we can't go that way. But you know, that's what happens sometimes. Don't you know? Sometimes you can't go the way you had planned to go. And that's the beautiful thing about Sister Harriet Tubman. Because she would find a way to go around all those things that people put in her way to keep her from taking somebody to freedom. And they were absolutely right. Miss Harriet Tubman brought a lot of people right through here. Did you hear me? Miss Harriet Tubman, and they said she was a mighty strong woman. You know how tall she was? She was only about five feet tall, but she was mighty, mighty, mighty. And those trips she made to carry people to freedom right through here, she did. She walked these streets of this here city. And most of the time, when she was bringing people through, you know what she was doing? She was bringing her own family to freedom. So Miss Harriet didn't forget where she came from. She did not forget where she come from. And we can't forget that this is a special place. And it's special because of the people that live here. And I'm one of them. Oh, I didn't tell you my name, did I? No. My name is Queenie Rivers. Well, I should say Mrs. Queenie Rivers because my husband get mad when I don't mention him. His name is Leroy. I'm Queenie and he's Leroy. Now, in another language, Leroy means the king. So I'm the queen and he the king. Now, I work up the road at the Cataract Hotel. You know where that is? It's a comfort in kind of place. You can find comfort in my hotel, the Cataract Hotel. And I works with a lot of other people, a lot of color people, because you know, we get the jobs of washing the dishes and being the maid and being the butler, and I'm a cook at the Cataract Hotel. And famous people love to come to our hotel because they like my cooking. I'm sure I know that's true. But one of the things that we do at my job is also we help people get across to freedom. Anybody that let us know they won't stay freedom, we're sure to help you. Now, you know that's dangerous work, but we don't care because we want to do it to help anybody get their freedom. We're just so close to freedom. How could you not help somebody? And let me tell you, around 1850, Ooh, we got so busy. We got real busy because of that law. You know that new law they started, that Fugitive Slave Act? Well, they said that anybody that the police say have to help them keep somebody in slavery. Did you know that? Wow. And you know what else? Did you know that when the rich people from the South come up here to get away from all that heat, and, 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 and they bring their slaves with them. Do you know that at my hotel that they can put people and chain them up in that basement so they won't get free? They can do that. It's, it's the law. They can do that. So that's why every chance we get, anybody tell us they want us to get up out of here and get to some freedom, we help them. Isn't that something? So while I'm making them scrambling them eggs, I'm trying to think of a way to get somebody across that bridge so they can taste freedom. Because, you know, when you get this close, not only can you taste it, but you can smell it. 
It's just right across that river. Can you smell it now? That's not food you smell. That's freedom you smell. So, even though it's against the law, and I really shouldn't be telling you what we do, I hope you will help somebody when they wants to get free too. Did that man come here yet? Mr. Dave, is he here? He's, he right there, So, but he don't see me. Okay, so I'll keep, I'll keep talking. Because I'm so proud of the peoples that live here. Let me tell you one of the things that happened. Oh. Oh, okay, I thought that was him. Okay, so the daughters was talking about Miss Harriet Tubman using this here road to get to freedom. Well, she actually did. Do you know it was a Christmas that she actually walked across the bridge? Did you know that? Christmas. Well, you know, Miss Harriet, she had her a real close relationship with God. She did never make no move unless God told her which way to go. And he would just talk to her, and so it just so go to happen. She was troubled in mind. Something was just wrong with her in her spirit. She didn't know what it was. So she said she'd get in touch with some people she know farther down south, because she was already in, in free freedom land. So she got in touch with some people she knew, and sure enough, there was some trouble with her family. They were going to sell her sister way down south. Now, when I say way down south, I'm talking Alabama and Mississippi. See, now, if you was a slave in Maryland or Virginia, you was close to the Mason-Dixon line. You was close to freedom. Now, it didn't mean that you was treated any better but you were closer to freedom. And nobody, nobody wanted to be sold south, for the south. That is the worstest thing that could ever happen. And here it is, her sister was gonna be sold. And you know Miss Harriet, like the daughter said, she didn't take no stuff. So her decided that she was gonna get her peoples, and that's just what she did. So when she get home, she find out that her brother, wife, to bring forth life but he was trying to get away so he didn't know what to do but they decided that they was going to meet not too far from Miss Harriet's father place now Miss Harriet hadn't seen her mama and daddy for so so long and she dearly wanted to see her mama but she knew she couldn't go and let her mama know that she was back now you have to remember her mama and daddy they were still in slavery. But Miss Harriet, she had took her freedom, right? But she come back to get her brother. And she wanted to see her mother, like I said, but she knew if she let her mama know that she was there, her mama was gonna have a fit and start praising the Lord so she just couldn't let her own mama know she was there. But she could let her daddy know. Now Mr. Ben was a good, honest, trustful man. So she knew if she let him know, she still would have to be careful. But he would have to get the message to her brother that she was a comfort. So that's exactly what happened. Miss Harriet made it down there, and she got to the field where her daddy lived, and she let him, gave him a sign so he would know that she was there. So now, like I told you, Mr. Ben, that was his name. Mr. Ben was so honest that Miss Harriet had to 